Ron, thanks so much for coming on the uh, Infinite Banking Radio today, man. Uh, again, appreciate you coming on. What's going on? Yeah, nothing. Just uh, at the office, helping clients, working, loving life. Very, very blessed, man. Yeah. 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 I uh, I mentioned early on, I said, you are the world's best daddy, according to your five-year-old. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, out of all my credentials. <laughs> And accolades. That's the one I'm most excited about or most proud of, I guess. Number one, number one. Hey, well, well, here we, let's just get into it, man. Ron, tell me kind of your story, yeah. how you uh, got into this infinite banking strategy and uh, kind of just start from there. Tell us more about yourself. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I actually graduated from University of Michigan back in 03 with a degree in teaching or education. And so I was a, uh, in the traditional education system for about eight years or so. Um, and during that time, you know, my agent um, had got me started on a, a small policy, like a starter policy. And they, you know, educated me a little bit on it, you know, on a teacher salary. I wasn't contributing very much. I, I think it was $200 a month. Um, and it was one of those things like being outside the industry, like, okay, yeah, that sounds good. You get started, you kind of forget like what you're doing, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Uh, but I, uh, when I got to, uh, to 30, I had like a little midlife crisis thinking, oh man, I'm not going to be able to accomplish the things that I want to accomplish in my life on a teacher salary. So I started looking at other things and I ended up going into the mortgage industry, got recruited there by um, by one of my friends who was working there doing a good job uh, for Rocket Mortgage. Uh, in my first year there, once I kind of learned the industry and got my feet under me, it, it did pretty well. Uh, I remember remarking like, hey, I paid more in taxes this year than I made last year. So that was kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I called my agent back and said, hey, I want to increase this life insurance policy that I'm doing. And so we um, added a second policy. But then at that meeting, he started recruiting me into the business. Uh, and at the time, I, I thought it sounded interesting, but I, I didn't get started. I mean, I was happy where I was at, um, but I thought, you know, that sounds kind of interesting. I might want to help people with this. And it, this ended up being about a year and a half later, I called them back. You know, they they had an opening, so they, they brought me on board. And I, I started out working for a company, and they didn't really focus on infinite banking. Actually, they just focused more on traditional life insurance. But I got my start in life insurance in 2013. So this year is the 10-year anniversary. Wow. And it's just really been over the last three years uh, or so since going independent uh, that I've really had the big infinite banking focus and and, and really just have a passion. Like just because I do a lot of things here. I, you know, I do retirement planning. We do assets under management. You know, I have my series 65. So, you know, on the advisory side, we do that. Uh, but I love uh, working with infinite banking, especially for my business owners and, and real estate investors, really helping them to uh, save money and kind of re remove uh, their complete dependence on Wall Street and on the banking system and take back control of their money. So to me, infinite banking is all about escaping the matrix. Yeah, there you go. I like it. escape the matrix. So, yeah. so yeah. Ron, give us your 30,000 foot view of infinite banking. There's a lot of different ideas and strategies, There's a lot of noise out there, as you and I both know. Uh, again, like I mentioned before, you've got a massive following on TikTok, but give us your 30,000 foot view. What is infinite banking? Why do people use this and how, how do your clients utilize it in their own lives? Sure. Yeah. So infinite banking, again, it's about escaping the matrix. It's about taking back control for yourself. All that money that people normally spend, and, and whether it's paying cash for things, like people think, oh, I should never have a car loan. I'm going to save up money in a bank, a bank account and then buy my car's cash. Well, they don't understand what a terrible decision that is sure. because they don't understand that they're taking that money and they're transferring it out of their personal economy. They're transferring it out of their system forever. And then the auto dealership gladly will accept that money, put it on their balance sheet and put it to work for them to build their wealth over the next 30 or 40 years, right? And people don't understand that. So ultimately, I think it's about taking back control of your money, recycling and recapturing the money that comes through your personal economy and finding ways to keep it on your books so it continues to work for you. Long-term, uninterrupted compound interest, building tax-free wealth for yourself. I tell you know some of my clients, it's, it's kind of like you're funding a tax-free personal pension for retirement, but you're able to, as the equity builds over time, you're able to borrow against that equity and make really smart moves, whether it's starting a business, expanding a business, investing in rental real estate, things of that nature. So I think it's a great place to park your cash, to park your working capital. We are going to get much better rate of return than what you're going to get in the bank. I mean, you get a bond-like return, you know, four, five, six percent, absolutely no market risk, tax-free without giving up access to the cash. And how do my clients use it? Real estate investing is the biggest one. Like just, just recently. Um, we had one of my bigger real estate investors from uh, California. He he just started a new policy with me uh, a year ago. Um, he sold the property, had this big old influx of cash. He wanted to shelter it. So we had to structure his policy where we were able to put in $150,000 
right away. Uh, we were able to ba backdate the policy six months. Nice. So then six nice. months later, he was able to put in another 150,000. And then years three through seven, we're able to drop it down to about 35,000. And then after the seventh year, we're able to uh, do a reduced paid up where it's fully funded. <clears throat> but after he dropped in that, that second uh, 150,000, he was able to borrow within the weeks, able to borrow uh, about 225,000, a little bit more, borrow it right back out and, and, and use it for the down payment on a property he's purchasing. And the key, uh, and you know this, right? So maybe I'm talking more to the audience, but the key is even though he's borrowed the 225 back out, he's earning interest and dividends on the full balance within his policy because the money didn't come out of the policy. It's not a withdrawal. He's simply borrowing against an appreciating asset. His insurance policy, his asset is still continuing to grow and compound tax-free forever, even though he's using the money elsewhere as leverage. That's what wealthy people do. Right. They get their money working for them in multiple places at the same time while being very cognizant of how the tax code treats their money. Tell me more about this, Ron. So like, like you just mentioned, uh, when we borrow money in the IRS's eyes, that's considered debt and that's not taxable. Can you kind of go into some more details about um, why this strategy is so lucrative? Uh, at least in my own eyes is, is the way that I've studied at least compound interest over time is if we can save a dollar of tax today, that will add three to four dollars of net worth down the line simply because we are able to earn on that dollar, otherwise sending it to the government. Can you kind of speak a little bit more about the tax favorability of infinite banking and how it's structured properly? Yeah. So I, I think maybe the best way to approach that question or that conversation is to use a comparative example, because what are most people doing, Nolan? They're, they're taking a tax deduction right now. They're building up money in a 401k and they don't understand that when they go to pull that money out later on, that money is going to be fully taxable. That's right. Now they've been told this big lie that when they get to retirement, that they're going to be in a lower tax bracket. And for probably like lower class people, they probably will. But that's not really who our message is for. Our message is for people who are serious about saving and investing and building wealth. I'll give you an example. Just a Monday, we had a gentleman come in. He's a professor at a local college here. He and his wife came in. The wife's a stay-at-home mom. They have seven kids. He makes about 220000 He's maxing out their, their, it's a 403B. He's maxing that out, and he's got $1.4 million amassed. He's, he, we're going through his tax return. That's what his effective tax rate is. Oh, man. I, I, that's, I don't know. I don't know. 11%. Why in the world? And I told them, why in the world are you taking a tax? Because he's wow. got the, the mortgage interest deduction, all the children, all that they're going to college. He's got so many deductions. Yeah, he's making 220000 His effective tax rate is 11%. Why in the world are you taking a tax deduction right now at an 11% effect of tax rate? He's built up $1.4 million. Wow. And he's going to be working another 13 or 14 years is what he told me. And, if, you know, if, and we're going to have another meeting. But if he were to continue that path... He'd have two and a half, three million dollars built up, and he's going to be in a much higher tax bracket sure. later sure. on when he retires than what he's in right now. So anybody who's serious about building wealth, it's a big lie that they're going to be in a lower tax bracket later, right? It, it just is. Um, and, and then the the other thing we kind of like, you know, shift over to, to, to infinite banking. Um, you think about if someone has a million dollars in their four hundred one k, like pre tax. Um, you know, the, the example I just used, that, that guy had that guy had more. I can go on and on about his situation. <laughs> uh, but if you think about some, someone who's got a million dollars, they're able to pull out a certain amount of money every year. And because of the way the market goes up and down in the retirement planning industry, we have this golden rule that's been around for about 30 years now. It's called the 4% safe withdrawal rule, right? So if you have a million dollars, that means you're able to take out $40,000 per year. It's fully taxable income. So even if you're in the lowest income tax bracket, like federal, you pay 10% federal tax, 5% state tax, you're going to net less than 3000 a month. And nice. at that distribution, it's going to make 85% of your social security taxable. So you talk about building up money in a 401k for 30 or 40 years. And I throw a million dollars out there very casually. I put you about the top 3% of all retirees. I'm using it for the example. I'm throwing it out casually. So, but, but point is, you're it, it's going to be about, you know, after tax, about thirty-four, thirty-five thousand dollars of actual net income. So you're putting this money in there till you're 60, 65. And then once you're pulling the money out, you got to take three or four years of distributions to actually take the distribution, pay the income tax, and then net your money. It could be three or four years, five years in retirement until you actually net a hundred, a hundred and twenty thousand, right? 
Now, going back to this infinite banking concept, I, I feel like you, you do a lot of real estate investing. You help people with real estate. I, I do too. Um, you know, I've used my infinite banking policies to help acquire real estate, rehab real estate. Um, last year, well, I guess about a year and a half ago now, uh, summer of 2021, we did a cash out refinance on one of my properties where we were able to pull out $120,000, the cash out refinance. And so that's not income. Nolan, you know that that's a that's form right. of debt and debt is not income. I pulled that $120,000 out, didn't owe a dime of income tax. And when I did that, I think I was 40, you know? Compare that to like a, someone who's doing traditional planning who would have to build up a million dollars, take distributions for several years. Maybe they're actually 70 years old before they've netted $120,000 from their investments. It's a completely different paradigm, like using leverage, using the tax advantages to keep more of, of what you're making. Um, just, just absolutely huge. Now, I could have taken that money and went out and bought a Corvette or something. I didn't. <laughs> uh, I, I actually opened up new life insurance policies. Yeah, I'd open up two of them. So I flowed that money in. Uh, and then I actually borrowed some of that money back out and did a hard money lending deal. Even better. So I mean, it's it, all about the velocity of money, like keeping control over your money and looking for ways that you can utilize it instead of just letting it sit stagnant in money jail for, you know, maybe one day, someday, you hope when you're 65 years old um, that you have enough energy and vigor to actually go out and live the dream of retirement. And for some people, maybe some people are sick by then. I mean, God, you know, God rest his soul. My dad passed at 65. So, I mean, there's, there's no day that's promised. So, you know, my my paradigm or my planning is all about, yes, we'll build wealth for the future, but let's find a way to enjoy it right now, too. I'm not Dave Ramsey. Hey, eat ramen noodles and don't do anything fun in your life until you've got a million dollars, you know. 100%. How, how do you guys um, at, at your office and your firm, um, because again, infinite banking or whole life insurance, like you just, you just spoke on, it's so... Uh, against what the financial entertainers preach, right? Like you just mentioned, Dave Ramsey, uh, the Susie Orsmans, everyone's saying the whole life is a horrible place to park money, this and that, the whole, uh, all the noise that's out there. Um, how do you guys uh, show clients and show investors that, first of all, this is not competing with your investments as it's just a better uh, tool to get where you want to go as in as savings. But most importantly, when you guys have clients, how do you guys help them comprehend or at least have that paradigm shift to where they can actually understand and utilize this in their own life? Yeah. Uh, let, let me ask you a question, Nolan. What are the wealthiest institutions in the world? Got to be banks and life insurance companies. Banks. And where do banks hold their capital? In bank-owned life insurance. Correct. So I'll ask people that. Now, the, the, they don't know where banks keep their money, but I have all sorts of research and data and spreadsheets and things, you know, resources we can show them and they can't believe it. But wait, Bank of America's got $25 billion of cash value and in life insurance? Do you really think the executives of the banks got tricked by some slick talking life insurance salesman? Sure. No. Right. No, these policies are absolutely amazing. You know, why is it that you know eight, an estimated 85% of CEOs use life insurance to fund their own retirement plans? Why do they do stuff like that? Why, why do they have bank-owned life insurance? Why do they have corporate-owned life insurance? All this crap that Dave Ramsey and Susie Orman is telling you, it's a lie. It's a huge false narrative. I mean, come on. Do you really think, do you really think that Wall Street has your best interests in mind while they're spinning these narratives? No. Right. You really think that the banks have your best interests in mind? Absolutely not. <laughs> I mean, look, if you do, I got some oceanfront property here in Michigan to sell you, <laughs> right? You can sell me the, book, so, and, the Brooklyn know, Bridge, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, I, I had a mentor, and I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He's pretty large in the life insurance space. His name is Tom Love. And uh, he, he said at, at one point during some of his classes and seminars and things like that, that you want to be so strong with your messaging that you purposely repel 85% of people because the masses just don't get it which is why the Dave Ramseys of the world battle crap financial advice to the masses. Sure. But the 15% of people who are actually engaged in their thinking and they understand taxation, they understand the need for liquidity and the velocity of money, um, they're going to resonate with your message. And then you treat them so well that you only need 15% and they're going to become stark raving lunatic fans. And they're going to love you and they're going to become an advocate and they're going to refer other people to you. And that's really all I do on my social media accounts. I educate with my beliefs and people who uh, want to follow Dave Ramsey, they'll argue with me and that's fine. But the people who that message is resonating with, you know, they come in droves and they put a lot of money, you know, into these cash value life insurance policies. Um, and it gets, it can get really, really exciting over time. But here's the thing, the life insurance policy itself is not going to make you rich. Right. 
It's what you're going to do with that money. So That's I think right. it's just the perfect holding tank for your working capital that you can, um, I guess, time the market, whether it's a real estate market or the stock market, or you have a business opportunity and you have access to capital, you can get your hands on like that. But especially during downturns, Nolan, because right now everybody's panicking and selling off assets in a fire sale. Like, oh, the stock market's down 20%. Oh, the real estate market's starting to go down in a lot of areas. And if this continues, people are going to start panicking. And people like you and I and our clients who have hundreds of thousands of dollars or maybe millions in liquid cash value, they're going to be able, to, while everybody else is panicking, they're going to be able to jump in and actually take advantage of the opportunity to expand and increase their wealth even more. Well, not not to mention too, Ron, it's it's... Um, it becomes the line of credit that you own and you control. I mean, I just had a conversation a couple of weeks ago with a guy who's got a million dollars of equity in his home and he's having trouble qualifying for a HELOC. And that's kind of one of the more amazing things about this policy is there's no qualifications. There's no amortization. Mm -hmm. There's no payback mm -hmm. schedule unless you want it to be right. It's it's that's kind mm -hmm. of the magic sauce is you control everything. And like you said, you keep everything inside of this uh, bubble instead of sending capital outside. Everything is funneling back to you on a tax-free basis. Um, I wanted to ask, I know your time is valuable here, Ron. I wanted to get one more thing out of you. Tell me more about your uh, your TikTok, man. I mean, I follow you. I know 350 other thousand people follow you. Um, tell me how you at least got into this strategy, You know what you're preaching on there, because I'm a raving fan of you and what you're talking about Thanks, and uh, <laughs> just your your business model in general. I'm a very reluctant TikToker, Nolan. Uh, <laughs> I've nice. been on TikTok for a little <laughs> bit less than a year and a half. Um, it was the smartest thing I've ever done, though, because it's probably literally quadrupled my business. Because now instead of you know working with people, mostly just locally, I think before getting on TikTok, I was licensed in five states. But mostly for like people who I'd met here and had moved away. Um, and now I've got clients in more than 40 states because through the, the, the power of social media and having a big platform, I'm just able to get my message out there and work with people who I never could before. But again, being very reluctant, um, I had a younger client who was telling me for over a year that I needed to get on TikTok. And the only time I'd ever heard of TikTok is, is when I saw my buddy's like 20 year old niece and, and her little girlfriends making dance videos out in the yard. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. what, what the hell am I going to do on TikTok? I'm a 40 year old financial advisor. I'm not a you know teeny bopper doing dance videos. And she said, well, no, 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 there's financial people on there promoting their business and they're nowhere near as good as you. I think you do really well. Uh, I resisted for over a year, um, finally uh, finally got on. And the only reason I got on is there's a, a younger gentleman who I brought into the business. He's he's also on TikTok. I don't know if you've ever seen a, a guy named Tax Free Mike. You ever seen him at all? Maybe, maybe. I would definitely, have, I'm sure I've stumbled across him. Yeah, so um, so he got on TikTok in the summer of 2021. And if he told me about it. He's like, oh, I'm starting to get some engagement. I thought, oh, what the hell? I'll, I'll try it. You know, yeah. I got nothing to lose. Within a few weeks, I you know had a video go viral, and I had I got about 150 thousand followers like in my first month or so, and it was like just off to the races. But I just love it. So I go on there, I just talk about what I believe. I bust a lot of these false narratives, or if you know who Garrett Gunderson is, he calls it killing sacred cows. Um, just all this false crap out there, like with Dave Ramsey. Dave Ramsey is full of half truths and false narratives, and tries to pass them off as 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 actual truth. And I just go on there and talk about the reality, and it pisses a lot of people off. And they just want to bury their heads in the sand. And I can I can draw that out on a whiteboard. Like if you got a million dollars in your 401k, this is how it's going to work. You're going to receive less than $3,000 a month of, of after-tax income. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the financial institutions are still making their percentage on the full $1 million. And if you're okay with that, great, you're okay. And they they argue. like they they People do not want to face the facts that what they've been doing is not smart. So then they, they, they try to like reverse engineer it in their mind, like as an excuse or a justification where I can show them much better ways. But it's like a lot of times people are just setting their views. And, uh, you know, like the old saying goes, um, when, when the, when, how does it go? When the, 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 you will change where the pain of changing it becomes less than the pain of staying the same. Sure. And that's what I find a lot of people who are a little bit older in their 40s or 50s, once they see my message, are really drawn to it because they've been through a couple market crashes and they don't have a lot of time left anymore. And they think, oh, if we have to go through that again, I might be screwed. They also, they're starting to realize the impact of taxation. Like the one gentleman who came into my office and realized that I've got 1.4 million and taxes are going to be higher in the future. Like I'm, he, this guy is going to be losing all his deductions as his kids graduate and move out of the house. He gets his mortgage paid off. He's going to have no more deductions. 
And he's going to have a huge pile of money that he's never paid taxes on. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that's going to be a real problem. Um, so it's just, you know, b busting those lies and the false narratives and just providing the education and the people who like what I have to say, they book an appointment with me and those who don't, they can just keep moving on. No, no problem. If you're following the Dave Ramsey way, it's better than doing nothing, you know, sure. better than blowing every dollar that comes into your, into your life. Yeah, no, absolutely. And again, guys, uh, so, so again, Ron, I appreciate you coming on today, man, and all your time. I know it's valuable. Um, again, guys, this is this is Ron Sneller. This guy is wicked sharp. I'm going to put all of his um, all of his credentials and information in the bio of this episode. But uh, Ron, before we get out of here, do you have any other uh, final thoughts? Yeah, um, I know that you do a lot in the real estate space, and 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 looking at your videos uh, and the knowledge that you have, you're you're definitely light years ahead of me there. You know, I'll openly tell people like, look, I'm a financial advisor. I'm an expert with insurance, with the stock market, managing investment portfolios, things of that nature. Again, I'm not the hugest fan of 401ks, but I think doing some planning specifically for retirement is important. Uh, I, you know, I like combining like 401ks and Roth accounts and brokerage accounts, stuff like that. Um, you know, but, but Nolan is the guy here for real estate investing, the infinite banking investor. Make sure that you're following him on TikTok. And I don't know if you have Instagram or Facebook Reels or any other platforms, uh, make sure that you're following him because he puts out a wealth of knowledge about the real estate investing world. But I especially like that video that I commented on today about <laughs> all of the government waste. Oh and that goes to where taxes are heading in the future, man. Yep. 31 trillion in debt. Social Security is projected to become bankrupt in 2034. Medicare is projected to become bankrupt and or I should say insolvent uh, in less than five years. There's even cities and states on the verge of bankruptcy. I should know. I live in Michigan. Detroit filed bankruptcy a few years back. So at every level, local, state, federal, the entire tax structure is going to have to increase massively. And even the former uh, controller of uh, of the USA, basically the, the CPA of the USA, David Walker, yep. uh, he went out there and said that tax rates are going to have to double in the future. Our country is going to go broke. So um, it's going to happen. And the current administration is telling you right to your faces that it's going to happen. Although they're lying and saying, well, it's only going to impact you if you make over $400,000 a year. But then you see all these videos from CPAs, like real professionals. They're like, got the tax, like, no, nope, that's not going to happen. You're, you're, if you're making, you know, whatever, 100, 150, it's going to impact you too. So it's just a big lie, you know, some yep. false narratives. So I, I love what you do, man. So go make sure you follow Nolan Sandburn, the infinite banking investor. He's a stud. Well, well, Ron, I appreciate that a ton. And again, guys, it's it's like Ron and I, we just try and preach the gospel, the the, the real truth, whether you like the the reality or not. Um, I think that's kind of where you and I get along is we're both in the same boat, not trying to hurt anyone's feelings, just telling the real truth facts about it. And, and the best part, like you just mentioned as well, if we can get our money out of taxable locations right now, literally, I, I say this to my clients and my limited partners and my syndications. Imagine the opportunities that we're going to be able to take advantage of in like the next over the next 10 years, because everyone is going to be swimming upstream, paying these massive amounts of taxes. And we have all of our money in this tax free, ever compounding account that nobody can sink their talents. I mean, just think about that. So um, yeah. that's what fires me up, man. But uh, again, guys, this is Ron Sneller, rock star guy on Sneller Financial on TikTok. And uh, uh, I will have all of his information in the link in this bio. But Ron, again, man, thanks so much for coming on. I'm, I'm excited to uh, continue our friendship, man. Thanks so much. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. I got a client appointment right now to go to three minutes here. So this wrapped up perfectly. Really appreciate it. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks, brother. Right, talk talk soon, soon, brother. All, all right. right.